guys. Um, good to see some people already tuned in. Um, yeah, so if you're like me, you have like a little bit more arranging you need to do. So get that done. Get your props. Get your props out. Bring them to your space. Roll out your mat. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> this class um, is going to be a 60 minute class. And um, I, if you've done yoga with me before, you'll know that um, 60 minutes may be more like 60 three or four minutes. Uh, but I'm going to give it a couple more seconds. Uh, no, this clock says 5.30. I just, uh, I don't have a lot of preface today with class. Um, I, we're going to do, uh, we're going to approach things a little differently in the beginning. We're going to start standing. Uh, there'll be some fairly vigorous work, um, some um, strength building exercises, some uh, some reps, if you will, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so yesterday and Monday we did a long um, line on our back series, uh, Supta Padangustasana, hand to big toe series, uh, but because this class is shorter than those classes, um, we're not going to do that, and instead we will uh, round off with an inversion. Um, so, hopefully that all sounds good to you. I know that I have been looking forward to this time on my mat, and I hope that you feel the same way. So, uh, I'll put down my notes, and we will start standing today. So, uh, get on your mat, take your feet hip-width distance apart, lift and spread your toes. So, we want to make a conscious and broad connection between our feet and the earth, and then place your toes down. As you look down at your feet, visualize, imagine roots growing from your body, extending energy down into the floor, down through the floor, down through the foundation of whatever building you might be standing in, until you reach the earth below. Feel that your legs are secure beneath you, that connection with the earth is strong and supportive. And then from the earth, draw energy up through the legs, tone the muscles of the legs. If you were with me last week, we're going to engage Janu Bandha or knee lock by drawing in and up the muscles around the knees. Lift into the front of the pelvic floor as you lengthen down through the tailbone. <laughs> Shrug your shoulders up towards your ears and then loop your shoulder blades together behind your heart, toning the upper back muscles. And then turn the palms forward and reach the fingertips downward so that the shoulder blades are drawing down the back side of your chest. Bring your chin parallel to the floor as you lengthen the back of your neck and lift through the crown of your head. Bring your attention to your upper abdomen. Create a tone in that space by drawing your left front lower ribs in towards one another and then pulling that point towards your spine. This is mountain pose. You are strong, you are tall, you are one with the earth, growing up from it. Close your eyes. As you close your eyes, as you turn off this external sensory perception, tune in to your internal sensory perception. What is the experience of your physical body at this moment in this shape? What might be drawing your attention? Let your mind traverse the body, pausing, um, uh, 
studying any areas that may be requiring additional uh, thought, additional, um, <laughs> additional attention. Now consider whether there is an emotional component to this stance, to this moment. Can you distinguish any emotions that you might be experiencing right now? And then what are the qualities of the thoughts? What thoughts are coming up are they leading you out of this moment, out of this shape, out of this room? If so, what are those thoughts? By viewing them now, can you form acceptance around those ideas and put them aside for the present moment, for the, uh, for the duration of the practice? Throughout the class, we continually attempt to arrive the intention to be present. If you have not already, begin to slow and deepen your breath. Begin ujjayi pranayama by drawing in a gentle contraction at the back of your throat. And let the corresponding sound of this breath be another tool to bring your senses into your body and into the present moment. Notice if you have any res uh, resistance to deep breath mentally, emotionally, physically. And then can you try to surrender any of those, um, any of those tensions or um, resistances you might have to the deep breath? With your next inhale, sweep your arms overhead, keeping the eyes closed, bring your palms to touch, try to touch your fingerprints together. As you exhale, bring your hands down through heart center, roll the shoulders back, turn the palms forward, come back to Tadasana. We'll continue that movement with each inhale, sweep the arms overhead, keeping the eyes closed, bring the fingertips to touch, hands to prayer overhead. Exhale, bring those prayer hands through heart center, and then arms back to your sides, palms forward, shoulders roll back. Inhale up, reach up out of the waistline, reach through the fingertips, ground from hips to heels, hands through heart center, arms to your sides. Inhale, gather space, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center, through the middle line, arms to your sides. One more time, sweep the arms up, reach up, keeping the eyes closed. Exhale, bend the knees as you gently fold forward. Bring your fingertips to the floor with bent knees, or if, uh, if you have a prop nearby, you might grab a prop and place it underneath your hands. Release the upper body forward. As you inhale next, bring your palms to your shins, straighten your elbows, extend your chin and chest forward into a half lift. Exhale, fold deeply once again. Head releases hands to block or to the floor. Inhale, sweep the arms out, up and overhead, push down through the feet, palms touch at the top, keeping the eyes closed. Exhale, arms through heart center and to your side. Let's continue to move with the eyes closed through these half sun salutation A's. Inhale, arms overhead. 
Use the entire duration of your exhale to come to a forward fold, releasing the head down. Inhale to lift halfway, shoulders on the back. Exhale, fold deeply in, push the feet down, lift the hips high. Inhale, rise up, push down, reach up, grow tall. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides. Again, eyes closed, inhale, sweep up. Exhale, flow gently forward, fingertips to the floor, head release. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold deeply in. Inhale, rise, sweep the arms up, reach up, palms touch. And exhale, hands back through heart center and keep them there. Rest the thumbs on the sternum, on the sternum collarbones are broad. We will chant Om three times before continuing the moving practice. Exhale your breath. And inhale for all. together is not an option for you. Slide a block at its lowest setting between your thighs. Lift and spread the toes, place them back down, root down from the hips to the heels, and inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Interlace your fingers, cross your thumbs, point your index fingers to the sky, grow tall as you inhale, and exhale, lean the upper body to the right, shifting the hips to the left, lengthening the left side body. If this causes pain or compression, in the low back, then re-engage re -engage the legs, try to lengthen the tailbone down. If still the pain persists, bring the right hand to the hip and push down with the hand on the hip, lift up out of the waistline. If you don't uh, prefer that support, use the right arm to pull the left side body long. Keep the legs engaged, left heel down, then turn the gaze up beyond the left tricep muscles. Soften the edges of the face, direct breath along your left side, down the shoulder, between the ribs, outer waistline, outer hip. Keep breathing. And inhale, come back through center. Switch the interlace of your fingers, bring the opposite thumb in front. Grow tall as you inhale. Exhale, upper body leans to the left, hips shift to the right. Engage the legs, lengthen the tailbone, Use the right arm either to pull, use the left arm either to pull the right side body long or bring the left hand to the hip for support of the low back. Keep the hips and chest squared forward and then turn the gaze up beyond the right tricep muscles, noticing how that changes the pose where your, your um, sensation may have been changed or directed from that slight modification. Soften the edges of the mouth, relax the jaw, direct breath to the right shoulder between the right ribs, down the entire right side of the body. Inhale, come back through center, interlace your fingers behind your head, widen your elbows out, hug your shoulder blades together behind your heart. Tilt your gaze up as you press down from the hips to the heels. Look along the ceiling as you start to lean the head back into the hands, curling the upper body back. Gaze along the ceiling towards the back wall. Keep the legs engaged, feet rooting down. Lift into the heart space as you inhale, inflate the chest. As you exhale, curl back into the unknown.
slowly bring the chest forward, arms forward, head comes up last, arms to your sides. Let's do some shoulder rolls forward and back. And inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Palms touch, exhale, gently bend the knees as you bring the fingertips to the floor in front of you. Release your head down and start to walk out your dog. Bet, or walk out your forward fold, I should say, because that's what we're in. <laughs> okay, bend one knee, reach the opposite hip up and out, noticing the backs of the legs, the release in the lower back after our back bend. And if it feels okay for the knees, lift up onto the knuckles of the toes, heels off the floor, bend the knees forward, sit, sink the hips to the heels once. Do it twice if it feels good. Heck, if it feels good, do it three times. Okay, from here we're going to walk the arms behind the feet, changing position so you can see this better. Lift the heels up, slide the hands underneath the heels. If the feet are together, the pinky fingers will be touching side by side. Bend the knees deeply so you can sandwich the torso to the thighs. Push the feet down, lift the hips up, lift into the shoulders, drawing them away from the ears as you pull up with the hands on the heels. Draw your face towards or to your legs, uh, towards or below your knees. Crown the head, reaching towards the tops of the feet. Weight shifts to the front of the feet, into the knuckles of the toes. Breathe along the back body. Notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling. Are there places where you could send this idea of surrender, of releasing tension. Often, um, especially uh, if a pose is unfamiliar or it hasn't been visited in some time, the, uh, the sensations that we encounter might not be um, welcome. Now, it might not be something we want to face. But by facing these things, we can start to move forward from where we are. And that's the only place you can move forward from. Slide your hands out from underneath your uh, heels, fold in. Inhale, lift halfway, shoulders on the back. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, rise with the breath, sweep the arms out, up and overhead. Reach up as palms touch, push down through the feet. And exhale, arms to your sides. Okay, arms loose at the sides of the body, step onto your left foot, lift and spread the left toes, create a wide and stable base, and we're going to slowly start to swing the right leg forward and back. So uh, some of this is to demonstrate how, um, so hopefully as you do this, your arms are swinging in a kind of reactionary way to keep you balanced. So a lot of what balance is, is our body's innate ability to uh, keep ourselves upright. So this muscle memory, this strength. So let's uh, start to swing the leg with a little more vigor. <laughs> Whoa, you know, it's okay if you nearly kick yourself <laughs> off your left foot. Uh, I like this exercise. I think this, this just feels great. I originally uh, got this from Nicole Beachill. Um, she is, she is uh, one who swings her leg with reckless abandon. Okay, uh, right leg forward. Now we're going to pause. Hands to the hips. Extend through the right heel. Pull back through the right toes. Lift that leg as high as you can. Right outer hip wraps down. Hold for five. Four, three, lift into the kneecap, two, and one. Draw the knee in and up towards the chest. Keep the hands on the hips, and then ease the upper body forward parallel to the floor as you extend the right leg back. Knee and toes point down, right outer hip wraps towards the floor. Push down through the left leg, rooting down. Draw up from the earth into the left kneecap. Either choose to keep your hands there so that you can keep your hips level level, or arms back, arms out, arms forward, reach forward, look forward, chest and leg parallel to the floor for five, four, three, two, one, hands back to your hips, knee into the chest, 
and right leg down. Okay, strap on your invisible hula hoop, one direction, and then send it off in the other direction. Soft knees, soft ankles, movement in the hips, and we'll do the second side. So arms at your sides, they're going to know what to do to keep you balanced, right foot grounds, and then left leg starts to swing. <laughs> Small swings at first, and just like a child on a swing, starts to get higher and higher. Swing with reckless abandon. You know, kick your foot through a window. That's how recklessly you're swinging. <laughs> Just kidding. That's not good advice. Okay. Keep going. A few more swings. And left leg forward. Hands to the hips. Hips and chest squared forward. Left outer hip down. Left leg lifts. Reach through the heel. Pull back through the toes. Lift into the kneecap. Push down through the right leg for five, four, three, two, one. Knee into the chest, and then as you send the left leg back, extend the chest forward. Wrap the left outer hip down, lift into the left inner thigh, lift into the right outer hip. Arms back, collarbones broad, arms out. Arms forward, reach forward, look forward. Arms, chest, leg parallel to the floor. Push down with the right leg. Soften the edges of the mouth. Look, reach forward. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hands to hips. Push down. Come on up. And invisible hula hoop. One direction. Just a reminder, when you get your real hula hoop, you can't have your hands on your hips. So what do you do with your hands? Up here. Other direction. I like to do this, it's just like resting the arms. Give yourself a little hug while you hula hoop. Okay, what do we have next? Okay, so those of you who have been with me um, over the past several weeks, uh, you'll be familiar with this. If you have not, uh, this might be a new salutation to you. Uh, this is called a C salutation, S-E-A. And I believe it's called that because it kind of looks, there's a waving movement to this, uh, to this sequence. So this is the way I teach it. You, you may have, it's possible that you've encountered this with uh, some variation. But uh, if you've never encountered this before, uh, watch the first one. Otherwise, uh, if you're familiar with this, you can do it along with me. Okay, I'm going to stand at the top of my mat. And again, I'm taking my feet hip width distance apart. You can try it with feet together. I try. I, I find that hip width distance together is easier to balance. Okay, Tadasana. As you inhale, arms are going overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, sink the hips down into an imaginary chair. Thighs come parallel to the floor. Inhale, reach forward into a half chair. Exhale, lower the hips down, swing the legs vigorously overhead, and then inhale, come back to the half chair. So a little bit of balancing act there. Exhale, fold forward, hips high, head low. Inhale, come all the way up, reach up, look up. Exhale, hands through heart center, arms back to the sides, Tadasana. So that's one. Try it with me, we'll do it a few times. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, take a seat. Inhale, arms forward, half chair. Exhale, sink the hips down, swing the legs overhead. Inhale, come back up. Sit in the chair, reach the arms. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides. Again, inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, sink the hips. Inhale, reach the arms, waistline back. Exhale, sink the hips, swing the legs overhead. Inhale, wave forward, sit down. Exhale, hips high, head low. Inhale, rise. Method of your choice. Inhale, exhale, arms to your side. Let's do one more. 
Inhale, rise. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, lift halfway, shoulders on the back. Exhale, fold in, sit down. Inhale, reach the arms, waist back. Exhale, sweep the hips, swing the legs. Inhale, come forward. Balance in your half chair. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, rise, arms overhead. Exhale, Tadasana. Okay. Next, we will do a uh, tree pose. So take your left foot, a lot of balancing here in the early parts of practice. Place your left foot down, and I will wait. Visualize your roots growing from the body down to the earth. Set that, con that energetic uh, connection between your body and the earth. Stabilize your left leg. Hands to the hips, right knee, right toes turn out. Right foot to the inside of the calf, or use the hand to place the right foot at the inside of the left thigh. Or if you're feeling lotus leg today, make uh, the right leg a lotus leg. Okay, find stability at your center by bringing left leg into right foot, right foot into left leg. Hands come to your heart. Collarbones <laughs> broad, chest lifted, tailbone lengthens down. Find a point to steady your gaze, soften your eyes. Choose to stay here or take your branches out, up and overhead. Okay. You like this pose? You feel familiar with this pose? You feel at ease in this pose? Well, let's close our eyes. So again, taking away this visible, visual, external reference point. And notice how much of the pose, how much of balance is contingent on that. And have some sense of humor about how instantly this became a lot harder. <laughs> so uh, if you fall out, what does it take to get back into it? So um, I had the experience of falling out a lot yesterday, and I noticed that I was not taking my time to get back into it. So it's... Once you fall out, there's kind of a, um, there's kind of, <laughs> there's a moment where you have to re refocus, rededicate to the intention of being present. Talk a big game now, but you know, second leg, I'm going to probably be going down the first five seconds. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. Let's do it again. I'm right here with you guys. Uh, right foot down, send down those roots, and then stand onto the right leg, turn the left knee, left toes out, square the hips and chest forward, place the left foot to the inside of the calf, or use the hand to place it to the inside of the thigh, or lotus leg. Extend through the inner thigh, contract through the outer hip, lengthen the tailbone down, draw stability towards your middle line. Right leg into left foot, left foot into right leg, hands to heart center, collarbones broad. Find a steady gaze. Take a moment to appreciate all of those little micro movements that your body is making without micromanagement to keep you balanced. Arms may sweep out and overhead as the branches of your tree. Close your eyes. Kind of like a, an earthquake hit the moment you closed your eyes. <laughs> At least an earthquake started here. <laughs> what else can explain this difficulty that suddenly arose? So if you fall out, reroot. Okay, <laughs> and we are going down to the ground. 
So make your way into a tabletop position towards the top of your mat, planting your wrists below your shoulders, knees below your hips, and we'll move straight into our cat and cows. As you inhale, next belly and chest down, tailbone and gaze lift into the cow pose. As you exhale, round your spine, chin to chest, tailbone towards the floor, belly button towards the ceiling, push the earth away, pull the shoulder blades apart, cow pose, and continue through these two movements with the pace and duration of your own breath. Okay, back to a neutral spine. Let's bring the left hand below the face, right hand to the base of the skull for the back of the head. Inhale, right arm lifts up, elbow and gaze, look skyward. Exhale, right elbow to the left wrist or forearm. Inhale, open right. Exhale, curl in two. Three more. Inhale, open right. Exhale, curl in three. Inhale, open right. Exhale, curl in four. Inhale, open right. And exhale, curl in five. Right hand below the face. Left hand to the back of the skull. Inhale, open the chest towards the left wall. Elbow and gaze skyward. Exhale, curl in. Wrist towards the forearm. Or elbow towards the wrist. Inhale, open left. Exhale, curl in two. Inhale, open left. Exhale, curl in three. Inhale, open left. Exhale, curl in four. Last one. Inhale, open left. Look up. Exhale, curl in. Hands back below the shoulders. Extend the right leg straight up and back. Push back with the right foot, knee and toes point down so the hips are level. Tone the right leg, Janu Banda, left arm forward, explorer pose, as my children's yoga book uh, labels this. And I like that name because so I like the idea that you're, um, you're exploring with a mind to the past, a foot in the past, uh, gaze to the future and this stability in the present moment. So the lower ribs in and back, the heart reaches forward, the heel reaches back, the uh, fingertips reach forward, the gaze reaches forward. And then hand down, knee down. We'll do the second side, left leg straight up and back, knee and toes point down, hips at an even height, Janu Banda, lift and engage all the muscles in and around the knee, right arm forward. Shoulders at an even height, look forward, reach forward, extend back, stability at your center, lower ribs in and back, soften the edges of your mouth. And we're going to do a little core back, uh, low back strengthening series in plank position where we're going to lift the arm and leg much like this. And you can always come back to the table if that becomes too strenuous. Okay, knee and hand back down. Walk the knees back about six or eight inches, not five inches. It's got to be an even number. Just kidding. Tuck your tailbone towards the ceiling. Uh, cow pose in the low back, chin and chest forward. Exhale as you bend your elbows back, chin and chest to the floor. Elbows hug into the side ribs and then slide your way forward onto your belly. Lift the legs up and back, point through the toes, ground through the tops of the feet. Engage the muscles of the legs so that the kneecaps lift away from the floor. Lengthen back through the tailbone and then scoop it forward so the front of the pelvis grounds. Lower abdomen in and up. Shoulder blades on the back, collarbones broad. Inhale, chin and chest away from the floor. Little baby cobra, look ma, no hands. Lift the hands to engage the upper back. Strength of the upper back, lifting the front of the body up off the floor. And now let's sweep the arms back, interlace the fingers behind the back. 
Shoulder blades squeeze in, elbows turn up and in, and then reach back through the knuckles as you straighten the elbows. Press the feet down, lift the kneecaps up, lengthen through the tailbone, draw the lower abdomen in and up, reach with the knuckles, broad collarbones, lifted heart, side to neck back, crown of the head lifts, and then exhale, come on down, hands uh, back to where they were, tuck the toes, engage the legs, lift the kneecaps, reach back through the heels, and as you exhale next, push up from the earth into a plank position. As promised, left leg extends back, heel, heel and knee and toes point down, right arm extends forward, reach forward, reach back, five, four, three, two, one, hand down, foot down, right leg lifts, left arm reaches, extend back, reach forward, stability at the middle, five, four, Three, two, one. Second, first side again. Left leg lifts, right arm reaches. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hand down, foot down. Right leg, left arm. Five, four, three, two, one. Hand down, foot down. Press the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Enjoy it. Walk your dog. Explore the backs of your legs in turn as you reach one heel down towards the floor, one hip out to the side, bending the opposite knee. Reconnect with your slow, deep breath. A chance to arrive back in this moment. Okay, find stillness in your dog. Any amount of bend in the knees, emphasize the distance from your fingertips reaching forward to your hips, extending back, lengthening the spine. And as you inhale next, shift the shoulders over the wrist, come to plank pose. Exhale, lower down, as though moving into chaturanga. Inhale, push back up, plank. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Back by popular demand, yoga push-ups. First of 10, inhale, come forward. Exhale, lower with control. Inhale, push up. This can all be done on the knees. Exhale, hips go back two. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, hips back three. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, hips back four. Last one, first set. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Left foot inches towards the middle as your right leg extends straight up and back. Knee and toes point down. Release the left heel towards the floor as you engage Janu Banda. Knee lock on both legs. Lift as the left kneecap. Push the hands down and forward. Look to the top of your mat. And then as you exhale next, bring the left foot, the right foot to the top of your mat, setting your legs in a long stride lunge. Hands in on fingertips, ball fist, or blocks on either side of your front foot. Take a moment to let the hips melt down and forward till the right thigh is parallel to the floor. You might even bend the back knee a bit. Then strengthen and straighten the back leg by lifting through the back inner thigh, reaching through the back heel. Feel the feet on the floor, right foot, right foot pulls back in space, left foot draws forward, forward Scissoring the legs towards center. Ah, <sighs> okay, catch your breath. Catch my breath. Hands to the hips, elbows towards the ceiling, shoulder blades on the back, draw back through the sides of the waistline to come all the way up. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Palms touch, square the hips and chest forward. Keep the hips as they are. Exhale, open the chest towards the right, arms down to the height of the shoulders. Stay deep in the lunge. Inhale, forward, that's one, we're doing four more. Exhale, right. Inhale, forward, two. Exhale, right, three. Inhale, forward. Exhale, right, four. Inhale, forward. Exhale, right, and hold. Either choose to stay here, wrapping the left ribs towards the right, or take the right hand to the outside of the left thigh. Reach the left arm up along the left ear. Stay deep in the lunge. Weight in the right heel, pull back to the left foot. Lift into the back inner thigh. Lengthen along the left ribs for five, four, three, 
two, one. Added funky bonus. Come to the outside of your left thigh and do a little arm balance. It's the only arm balance we're going to do, I think. I think. Okay. Safely make your way back <laughs> to downward facing dog. That was just a lark. Um, put it in my notes, but realize uh, <laughs> not a lot of energy at that moment to actually go into de depth in teaching that pose. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that was if you know it, do it. If you don't know it, uh, it's just ridiculousness. Inhale, come forward. <laughs> okay, what are we doing next? Exhale, knees, chest, and chin to the floor, tailbone in the air. Inhale, come forward, press the feet down, shoulder blades on the back, engage the legs, lengthen the tailbone, lower abdomen in and up, shoulder blades on the back. Curl up, look ma, no hands. Sweep the arms back, interlace the fingers, elbows up, elbows in, shoulder blades on the back. Reach the knuckles back, expand the collarbones, reach the heart forward, sides to the neck back, crown of the head lifts. This time, squeeze the legs, lift the legs. Point back through the toes, lift the feet, the lower thighs, middle thighs, upper thighs, back body, strengthening and lifting the front body up away from the floor. Soften the edges of your mouth. Five, four, three, two, and one. Chin to the floor, hands placed by the sides of the ribs. Tuck the toes, lift the kneecaps, lengthen the tailbone, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale, push up. Back to plank position. Left leg lifts, right arm forward. Five, four, three, two, one. Hand down, foot down. Right leg, left arm. Five, four, three, two, one. Right leg, right left, right arm, left leg. Five, four, three, two, one. Hand down, foot down. I'm right here with you, people. Right leg, left arm. Five, four, three, two, one. One, hand down, foot down, press hips up and back. Downward facing dog, get reacquainted with your dog. Find the breath. Find the breath so we can synchronize those push-ups with some breath. And yeah, just because light, it's good to, it's good to find the breath. <laughs> okay, come on, inhale forward, plank position. Exhale, lower down possibly to your knees. Inhale, push up. Exhale, hips lead you back because it's yoga, downward facing dog. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale, press, exhale back two. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale, press, exhale back three. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale, press, exhale back four. Last one, best one. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale, press, exhale, hips lead you back five. Inhale, left leg lifts. Holding your three-legged dog, release your right heel to the floor as you lift the right kneecap. Jog the bottom, hands down and forward, leg up and back, lift to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge your left foot between your hands. <laughs> lift up on the fingertips, ball fist or blocks on either side of your front foot. Take a moment to weigh the hips down and forward, left thigh coming parallel to the floor, knee over the heel. Lift through the back, inner upper thigh, back leg straight and strong, reach through the heel, forward through the chest, broad across the collarbones. Left foot draws back, right foot pulls forward, scissoring towards the middle of your mat. Strengthen and square the hips. Hands to hips, elbows towards the ceiling, draw back through the sides. The waistline come up, high lunge. Arms at your sides, shoulders roll back, palms forward. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Palms come to touch, hips and chest squared forward. Stay deep in your lunge, exhale. Upper body uh, revolves to the right. Arms down to the height of the shoulders, one. Inhale back. Exhale, open left two. Inhale, center. Exhale, open left three. Inhale, center. Exhale, open left four. Inhale, center. Exhale, open left five. Hold or grab the outside of the right leg with the left hand. Right arm up by the right ear. Lean back. Deep into the lunge. Pull back to the left heel. Pull back to the right foot. Scissor the legs in. Breathe along the right side for five, four, three, two, and one. Do that side, side balance thingy in the debobber. Do it on the first side. Ekka, Pada, Kundanyasana, one or two. Okay, safely come back out of there and find your way 
to downward facing dog. Whew. Push the hands down and forward, shift the hips up and back. Three deep breaths, inhale and exhale. Out through the mouth if you like, inhale and exhale. Close your eyes, inhale, exhale, and sink your knees down to the floor. Knees together, feet together, send the hips back to the heels. Push the hands down and forward to round the low spine. Look forward and start to walk the upper body forward. Release the forehead towards or to the floor. Relax the forearms down into a child's pose. Rest the weight of the arms. Arrive in this moment. Consider that your experience right now on the mat is a culmination of the energy that you have um, generated, that you have <laughs> brought to you through the practice thus far. This moment is a culmination of the practice. This moment is a culmination of every practice you've ever done, yoga or otherwise. Don't miss this moment. Okay, slowly push your way up to seated. Okay, uh, this is the first time I'll be doing inversion this week, but we are going to continue with our handstand practice. So, uh, if you have some unobstructed wall space, then slide the short end of your mat to that unobstructed wall space for our handstand practice. If um, you would prefer to do headstand, um, I can't see you. Just tell, you can even just, you can uh, text me afterwards and tell me you did it, even if you didn't do it. And I won't even know, uh, but you'll know. Okay, uh, so we're gonna start with L at the wall for those of you uh, working on your handstand practice. So for this, we're just gonna extend the legs straight, sit on our bottoms, feet flush against the wall, place our hands by our hips, and then turn around. So your hands are now measuring the distance from your, uh, the length of your, legs to the wall. So um, we're going to uh, arrive in a shortened tabletop position. Spread the fingers, root down through the knuckles, try to get some weight out of the wrists. Then we're going to lift the hips up and back, coming into a short dog pose. Keep your gaze between your hands as you begin to walk your feet up the wall. So if you haven't done this before, you might just watch the first time. So look at my feet. Am I in an L shape? No, I'm in kind of a plank shape. This is called L at the wall, which means I want my body at a 90 degree angle. Hip, uh, hips over the shoulders, shoulders over the wrists, heels at the height of my hips. So this is a difficult shape to uh, hold. <laughs> so uh, shoulders on the back, push the feet down. And then when you feel like your arms are going to collapse beneath you, you simply walk your feet down off the wall. That's the beauty of the L at the wall. You can build strength without much risk, without the risk of falling on your head. Uh, whereas when we come to kick up at the wall, we don't have that same easy way out. The feet can't just jump, uh, can't just, um, are not as close to the floor. So uh, there, there is that risk of the arms collapsing before the feet come down. So L at the wall is a great place to build strength and confidence for those that time when you may be able to kick up to the wall, maybe ready to kick up to the wall. So I'm gonna start the same way, facing the wall. The newer you are to this, uh, the closer you'll wanna be to the wall. So if you are new to kicking up the wall, you probably wanna be about uh, eight inches from the wall. The longer you've been practicing, the further you're going to want to practice away from the wall to us to start to challenge your balance here. Okay, so uh, either be an L at the wall or follow me into this kick up practice. So hands are wrists are shoulder width distance apart, hands are turned out slightly, ground through the knuckles, try to shift weight out of the wrist 
as I push up and back into downward facing dog. Again, I'm keeping my gaze between my hands as I walk my hips forward to shorten the posture, get my shoulders more over my wrists. Okay, I'm gonna start by just doing some little hops, bending the standing leg, and then keeping the lifted leg, lifting closer to the wall. So switch sides, do maybe three, four, five on each side. It's gonna just look like this at first. Just a little hop. And then the hops get bigger. Maybe you hop all the way to the wall. For a moment, for two moments, for a minute, for two minutes. And then once the legs are at the wall, squeeze the legs together, lengthen through the tailbone, push down through the hands. So now we're rooting through the hands. Our root system has flipped up upside down. It's inverted. Okay. So do, do some more things. <laughs> Report back to me on what you did, what you found. And once you've done what you're interested in doing, let's come back to a child's pose. Hips to the heels, push the hands down forward to round the low spine, and then slide the hands forward, forearms down, forehead down. Completely surrender the weight of your body. And again, choose to arrive. So consider that we do, the po we do these challenging poses, uh, like handstand, not only as a uh, way to mark, um, mark our efforts, to uh, direct our efforts, and to, direct, and to measure change over time, but also consider the, uh, the immediate after effect of your efforts, no matter what you did in the pose. Let this residual, this resounding energy be heard in your body. So again, turn the senses inward. Turn on, turn up the, um, the, uh, <laughs> the inner cognition, the inner, uh, the inner sensory experience. The proprioception. Okay, arms extend back if you like, palms up. Release the arms by your sides. Let the heads of the arm bones curl forward as the upper back broadens. What's the changed or new effect of this shape? Option to enjoy. So as I mentioned earlier, if you, if uh, you are doing things today that uh, are challenging or unfamiliar or you haven't done in a while. Some of the sensations, some of what you encounter will not be pleasant, will not be what you want, will not be welcome. Uh, that can discourage us, but without facing <laughs> the tension, the, uh, the pain in our bodies, um, then how will we move on from where we are? How will we, how will we surrender that? How will we move past it? So there's definitely a degree of acceptance that has to be faced in a practice, especially a lifelong practice. Curl your way up to seated. And let's find our way onto our backs, our separate ways onto our separate backs. And we're going to build us some bridges. We're going to start with a little baby bridge over a little babbling brook. Heels in towards the hips, arms at your sides, length of the back of your neck. Push your feet down, lift your hips up without using your arms much. Just getting the length along the front of your hips. Notice the tendency for the knees to uh, open, the two open apart. Ground through the inner thighs, wrapping them down towards the floor as you lift through the outer hips. 
Ground through the inside of your feet as well as the outside of the feet. And then lower your bridge back down. Take your feet apart, let your knees fall together. You might even bring a hand onto your belly and a hand onto your chest. As you arrive in this nice moment between bridge building, a moment to be experienced, a moment to be savored. Bridge number two. Okay, it's been raining a lot, so our brook turned into a raging river. Heel, uh, heels in towards the hips, feet parallel, push the feet down, lift the hips up, interlace the fingers. Tuck the shoulder blades deeply underneath the chest so the vertebra of the upper back help to form our larger bridge. Tuck the chin towards the chest, push the feet down and forward, and look down at the front line of your bridge. Is your bridge lopsided? I often find that mine is. So can you identify that shorter side, that, sh uh, that uh, lower side, and try to breathe into the lump corresponding to that lower side? Easier said than done, you might close your eyes and concentrate on this internal action. Lower the hips, untuck the shoulders, walk the feet apart, let the knees fall towards one another or together. Hands onto the belly, hands onto the heart. Reconnect with the breath, eyes soft or even closed. We've got one last bridge to build. What bridge are you feeling? What bridge do you need at this moment? It could even be a restorative bridge by sliding a block underneath your hips. Me, myself, I just am hankering for a little action to end the practice. So come with me on a uh, journey to wheel pose. Biggest, <laughs> bigger than a bridge. Hands, uh, by the sides of your head, fingertips point towards your shoulders, elbows towards the ceiling, push the feet down, lift the hips up, come up onto the top of your head, hands in towards your shoulders, elbows, shoulder width distance, roll towards the bridge of your nose, push into wheel, gaze between the hands, heels down, inner thighs round towards the floor, outer hips lift, tailbone lengthens, open up the front of your body. And then close your eyes, if you will, turn the attention inward. What needs attention? Where can you direct breath? Where can you direct energy to find more balance in your shape? And when you're ready, come back on down to the back body. Knees fall together, hands to the body, eyes open or closed. <sighs> whatever gets you here, whatever gets you present. Okay, left heel back, in towards the hip, right knee in towards the chest, interlace the fingers behind the right thigh, and then push the thigh into the interlace of your fingers. Lengthen up through the right heel, pull back through the right toes. And then right foot back down. Left knee draws into the chest, interlace the fingers, push up through the heel, pull back through the toes. Push and resist. And now lift the feet, cup the knees with the hands, and pushing the knees into the hands, rock the hips side to side, rock the knees side to side, massaging the sacral spine. And then from there, draw the knees in and up towards the armpits. Take hold of the outside edges of the feet, come into happy baby. Soles of the feet open to the sky, and again, rock side to side, pulling one knee down, towards the earth, to the earth, and then the other. Keep the feet flexed, come back through center, and then just stretch out through the legs a little bit. A little bit will go a long way here. Push the feet into the hands, 
lengthen the tailbone down, and then draw the inner feet together, come into a reclined bound angle or butterfly pose, interlace the fingers around the outside edges of the feet, widen the knees out to either side of the room, extend through the inner thighs, lengthen the low back against the floor. With the feet pressing into the hands, let the heads of the arm bones pull away from the floor as the head remains grounded. And lastly, you have made it here. You have made it through the practice. You are wonderful. Give yourself a big hug and mean it. Wrap your arms around the fronts of your legs, grabbing wrists, forearms, or elbows. And then squeeze in, chin to chest, forehead towards the knees, tailbone towards the heels, less of the back body on the floor as you squeeze yourself so hard because you love you. You know you do, you're great. And then lower back down to the earth. Make any final subtle movements before lying on your back in Savasana. Extend out through the legs, arms at your sides. You might tuck your shoulder blades gently underneath your chest. Gather any props that will aid you in this, in this shape of just being. So this idea of embracing yourself, telling yourself you love you, uh, who else finds that challenging to do um, other than me? Um, but I believe in it. I believe that uh, I need to hear that. I believe that um, kindness starts with how we treat ourselves. And I know I believe this is because this is what I'm trying to teach my children. And uh, I was relaying this to a friend that it really, it's really cliche and it's really true that um, as a parent, um, we realize that we're just still trying to learn the same things we've been trying to learn our entire lives. Um, so <laughs> relearn kindness in this moment. How can you approach this pose to support your being? It might be a blanket underneath the head. It might be a sweater. It might be a pair of socks. It might be an eye pillow. You deserve it. You deserve this moment to reflect on the practice as it resounds throughout the physical being, throughout your emotional self, judgment, without attachment.
elbows come up. Consider if the mind has taken you out of the moment, it's taken you into the future or the past. Invite yourself back. And if you are ready, begin to move the extremities of the physical being, starting with fingers and toes, wiggling your scalp and the tip of your nose, eventually bending the knees, feet to the floor, extend the right arm along the right ear and shift onto your right side from our corpse pose into a fetal position. With the eyes closed, let's come up into our first seated position of today's practice. Root down through the legs and hips, and from the earth, grow tall along your spine. Bring your palms onto your heart, and reconnect with your breath. Let's chant Om one single time to close the practice. Inhale for Om. Om. Thank you for your continued patience, presence, and hard work throughout today's practices and past practices. The light in me recognizes, honors, and bows to the light in you. Namaste. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad I didn't put my hair in the fire there. Um, there's a little candle. Uh, thank you guys for uh, being present with the live stream, uh, let me know uh, who you are. Uh, I'm assuming uh, Jeffrey and Scotty are out there. Uh, I, I imagine you're my uh, Wednesday regulars, and maybe Rich is out there too. Uh, but whoever you are, I would uh, love to know that you're out there. I'd love to know that you're, uh, you're watching. Um, if you have suggestions or requests for future practices, let me know. Um, that I continue, I plan to do this indefinitely. I uh, definitely will be here next week. Um, Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday, 10 a.m., Wednesday, 5.30 p.m., um, 90 minute, 75 minute, one hour practice. So um, yeah, spread the word. Uh, <laughs> spread the word far and wide, and um, I hope you all are well. If you would like to, Send me a picture of your, um, your home studio. Uh, I'd love to see it. Also, um, I ha I've got a good deal on um, blocks right now. So if anybody uh, locally, I don't want to ship any more blocks um, in the mail because that ends up being pretty expensive. But um, 
any local people who want uh, blocks, uh, I have I can get them for five dollars each. So um, let me know if you need some blocks. Also, blankets, straps, and eye pillows, uh, five dollars each. So um, let me know and uh, via. Uh, the message board here. Uh, the best way to get in touch is probably the Athens Public uh, email address. Uh, otherwise, if you know my phone number, uh, you can text me. Uh, okay, thank you guys. Uh, hopefully, I will see, I will be here with you next week.